In this video, we solve problem number three from section 8.4 of the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions text, seventh edition. This is a problem from the trigonometric substitution section. And here is the idea. Um, if we're looking at an integral and the integrand reminds us of the integrand of one of our inverse trig antiderivatives. So for example, this one reminds me of this arc sine antiderivative because it has that a squared minus x squared in the parentheses. So it looks like a squared minus x squared under a square root, but that's not exactly what I have. I have that expression to the three halves power rather than the one half power or the square root is the one half power. Um, so this is not an arc sine, but it looks like an arc sine. If it looks like an arc sine, but it's not an arc sine because it has the wrong exponent there, and it's not a u sub. So there's no x in the numerator that would allow us to use a u substitution to evaluate this integral. Then we're going to make a sine substitution. So if it's this, do that. If it's a u sub, do the u sub. And if it's not, but it looks like that a squared minus x squared that we see in the arc sine antiderivative, we're going to let x equal a times sine of theta. If it looks like this, but it's not exactly that, we make a sine substitution. So um, let's write that down. Let's say since the integrand involves an a squared minus x squared, which looks like that sine integral or arc sine integral, but it's not an arc sine integral because of the wrong power there. And u sub doesn't work. We'll make a sine substitution. Now, in order to do that, before we substitute, we need to identify a. We see that a squared is 16. a is always positive, so a is the positive square root of 16, which is 4. And then we will let x equal a, which is 4, times sine of theta. Whenever you're making your sine substitution, x is always equal to a times sine of theta. Now, we're going to prepare to substitute here. That means I need to find dx in terms of theta. I need to evaluate this expression under, or that is raised to the 3 halves power um, in terms of theta. All of that I want to simplify, um, but I don't want to just make the substitution directly. I think I'd like to prepare to substitute first. We're going to simplify outside of the integral. So x is 4 sine of theta. We'll compute dx. dx is the derivative of that with respect to theta times d theta. Derivative of sine of theta is cosine of theta. And this expression in the parentheses can be simplified. That's 16 minus x squared, which is 16 minus whatever x was squared. Now, x was 4 sine of theta. We're squaring that. Now, remember from your algebra class, if you have a product and you're squaring it, you square each of those factors separately. So we're going to square the 4, and we'll square the sine of theta. 4 squared is 16. Sine of theta quantity squared is typically written sine squared theta. And now I see that this term and this term have a 16 in common. I will factor that 16 out. And then remember from trig, the sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of the same angle, of course angles are, are often just numbers and radians, that's got to equal 1. Um, and if I rearrange this, and by subtracting sine squared from both sides, I see that 1 minus sine squared of that angle is going to be cosine squared of the same angle. So this 1 minus sine squared of theta can be replaced by cosine squared of theta according to this rearrangement of the Pythagorean identity. So we've got 16 times cosine squared theta there. Now, if you want to, you could simplify the ex this expression raised to the 3 halves power right here, but I would, um, wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend substituting from here. So this is the prepare to substitute step. I think of preparing to substitute, we define x. We compute dx, 
And in this case, we simplify that a squared minus x squared. And now we'll go back up to our integral and we'll write everything entirely in terms of theta. So that's our next step. After we have prepared to substitute, we actually do the substitution. Now we still have the one in the numerator. We still have that expression to the three halves in the denominator. But this 16 minus x squared, we now know in terms of theta is 16 cosine squared theta. So we'll substitute that in here. Now be careful here. Don't just write a d theta. You have to replace the dx with this expression in terms of theta. So dx is actually equal to 6 cosine of theta, or sorry, 4 cosine of theta d theta. I don't know where I got a 6 from. I guess that was from the 16. So that's replacing the dx and that's replacing the 16 minus x squared. So we're, we're going to substitute, this is our next step, to write the integral in terms of theta. We're going to simplify. And then after we substitute and simplify, we will anti-differentiate. The whole point of the trigonometric substitution is to write this in terms of trig functions. And then hopefully because of what we studied in the previous section about trig integrals, we'll know how to evaluate this integral. Now there's still a little bit more simplification and algebra to do here. Um, <laughs> we used this fact here um, to square the four sine of theta. We squared the four, we squared the sine of theta, and we got the 16 sine squared theta. We're going to be using that fact again, except instead of having a second power, um, we'll just have everything to the nth power. If I've got a product here raised to the three halves power, I can raise each factor to the three halves power because a times b to the n is a to the n times b to the n. So this will simplify in this way. We'll have 16 to the 3 halves power times the cosine of theta quantity squared to the 3 halves power. And we still have that 4 cosine of theta over here. And of course, you can think of that as being in the numerator, and if you want, you could multiply across. So you can have a 4 cosine theta in this numerator, and then this expression in the denominator. Okay, now another uh, property from algebra. This is actually a power raised to a power. Now, if I had x raised to a power raised to a power, I would just multiply those exponents. The same is true here. Um, it just looks a little different because we're dealing with a trig function. We're going to take the two and we'll multiply it by three halves. That's going to give us a cosine cubed in the denominator. <laughs> And this 16 to the 3 halves can be simplified using a different exponent property. x to the m divided by n is the nth root of x to the m. Or if you prefer, you can take the nth root of x and raise it to the m. Now, when I am simplifying a number like this raised to the 3 halves power, I prefer to use this one. Because if I take the nth root first, that will make the number smaller, and then I can easily raise it to a power. So just to do my little scratch work over here, 16 to the 3 halves is actually the square root of 16 cubed. Square root of 16 is 4. Uh, 4 cubed is 64. So this is going to be a 64. And we still have this 4 and another cosine of theta right there, d theta. Now 4 goes into 64 16 times, so that will reduce. I've got one cosine here and three cosines down there. So one of those will reduce with one of those. And if I had three before, now I'll have two. And I'm left with this. The one over 16 is a constant. I can factor that out. And then the integrand is one over cosine squared theta. Now the d theta is over on the right. I remember from trig that a one over cosine of theta is secant of theta. And if we square that, we're gonna square that. So this is actually secant squared theta. Oops, there should be a 16 there. And we say to ourselves, do we have a rule for that as far as the antiderivative is concerned? And we do. The antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. Don't forget to add C. 
And now we're done with that second step. So we start by preparing to substitute, defining x, computing dx, and then simplifying that a squared minus x squared. And then we literally substitute. We replace the 16 minus x squared with this in terms of theta. We replace the dx with this in terms of theta. We're here. Now, the whole point of substituting is to be able to evaluate this antiderivative. So you substitute, you simplify, and you antidifferentiate. And that required a lot of algebra, as you saw. But eventually, we got here, and we said, do we have a rule for that? If you don't have a rule for that, go to your guidelines for trigonometric integrals. But this time, we do actually have a rule for that. The antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. Don't forget to add your c. And we're almost done. Now, this is an antiderivative. Um, or this is a result um, of an anti-differentiation process. And the answer is in terms of theta. So if I were to take the derivative of this from here, I would get an answer in terms of theta. If I take the derivative, turns out I get uh, one over 16 secant squared theta, um, which is exactly what we have on this line. So that's good. If we take the derivative of this, we should get this back. But we don't want an answer in terms of theta when we differentiate. We want an answer in terms of x. Because our goal was to find the antiderivative of this function of x. And this trigonometric substitution was just something that we did so that we could find that function of x. So we're not near done yet. Um, but we did the antidifferentiation part. Now our goal is to get this expression written entirely in terms of x. And we can write that expression entirely in terms of x by drawing a triangle. That's our next step. So we're going to use our original substitution, the fact that x is equal to 4 sine of theta, uh, to draw and label the sides. It's really to label the sides of a right triangle. OK. So I always draw my right triangle like this for a trig sub. There's my right angle, there's theta. Now, if x is equal to 4 sine of theta, I can solve that for sine of theta by dividing both sides by 4. And then I'll just switch the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And we'll have that. So sine of theta turns out to be x divided by 4. Now, remember from trig, got your, your little mnemonic device, so katoa. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So when the opposite side, the side opposite the theta in our right triangle is equal to x, has a length of x, the hypotenuse will have a length of 4. So if this is theta, the side opposite theta that's across from theta in the triangle is x. And the hypotenuse that's the side across from the 90 degree angle is 4. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, this side squared plus this side squared has to equal this side squared. And if we do the work, x squared plus b squared equals 16, 4 squared. If we solve for b squared, we're going to get um, b squared equals 16 minus x squared, and b equals the positive square root of 16 minus x squared. So we have labeled the sides of our triangle. Now, the whole point of labeling the sides of the triangle in this way was to be able to write this final answer, 1 16th tangent of theta, in terms of x rather than in terms of theta. Well, if I have this triangle, I can find tangent of theta using Sokotoa in much the same way that I labeled the sides of the triangle using Sokotoa. So sine of theta told me that the opposite side was x and the hypotenuse is 4. The Pythagorean theorem told me that that adjacent side would have to be the square root of 16 minus x squared. And we know tangent from Sokotoa is opposite over adjacent. So our final answer is the integral of 1 over the quantity 16 minus x squared close quantity to the 3 halves turns out to be equal to 1 16th tangent of theta plus c, given the substitution that we made earlier. But tangent is opposite over adjacent. And in terms of, in, in terms of uh, x, based on the sides of this triangle, the opposite side, the side opposite theta in the triangle is x. 
And the side adjacent to theta that's next to theta, but not the hypotenuse, the other one is 16 or the square root of 16 minus x squared. That is what we substitute for tangent right here. So I replace tangent with x over the square root of 16 minus x squared. And of course you wanna simplify, multiply straight across and you get x over 16 times the square root of 16 minus x squared plus c. Now we won't simplify this and check, but if we wanted to, we could take the derivative of this and show that after simplification, that derivative would equal this. Actually, it wouldn't be difficult to do that. Let's do that. So let's check. If we differentiate our answer, we should get that integrand back. So let's take the derivative with respect to x of this. And again, remember that the nth root of x to the m is x to the m over n. Now, if you just have the square root of something, there's an implied one there and an implied two there. So the square root of something is actually that something to the one half power. So this is actually a 16 minus x squared to the one half power. And of course the derivative of that plus c is zero. So we get a zero from this piece and this piece requires us to use the quotient rule. <laughs> we also have a mnemonic for that. Here's my mnemonic, the derivative of high over low. Now I know that we should probably spell the word high out all like that and low out like that, but just to make it simpler, I just use H-I and L-O is low D high minus high D low over low low. And the D is an operator, it applies to what's in front of it. So this says the derivative of this quotient is the bottom function, the low function, times the derivative of the high function or the top function minus high top function, d low, bottom function's derivative, all over low low. That's what we'll be applying here. So we have low d high, and I will just write out the derivative and we'll compute it in just a moment. d high is the derivative of x minus high is an x, d low. And I'm putting those derivatives in red just for emphasis, just to remind myself that I still have to compute those derivatives. All over, low, low. So we're taking this expression and we're squaring it. Alrighty. Now the derivative of x is just one. This derivative requires um, a chain rule. So I think I'll do that on the side. This is the derivative with respect to x of 16 times 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power. The derivative of 16 minus x squared to the 1 half power times the 16 comes from using the chain rule. So first we take the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is 16 times a function to the 1 half. The derivative of 16 times a function to the 1 half is 16 times 1 half, which is 8, times that function to the 1 less power. So that's the negative 1 half power. Then you put the inside function back in, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside by the chain rule. And the derivative of the inside in this case is the derivative of 16, which is 0, minus the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So we get a negative 2x there. Negative 2x times the positive eight out front is going to give us a negative 16 X times 16 minus X squared to the negative one half power. That derivative is what goes right there. So we have this, we've got 16 times 16 minus X squared to the one half times one minus X times derivative of this piece, which is this. So we've got um, 16x times the quantity 16 minus x squared to the negative one half. All of that is divided by this 16 um, times 16 minus x squared to the uh, positive one half squared 
Now, again, we've got a product squared. That's going to give us a 16 squared times this expression squared. Using this old property again, you multiply that M and that N. So we're going to multiply the 1 half and the 2. 1 half times 2 is just 1. So that's just going to give us a 16 minus x squared in that denominator. And I notice right away that I've got a 16 in this expression here and a 16 in this expression there. So I will factor out a 16 from this piece and this piece. Sixteen times sixteen minus x squared to the one half power gives me this first term, and then sixteen times an x times an x, which is an x squared, times the sixteen minus x squared to the negative one half gives me the second term, and all of that is divided by sixteen squared times sixteen minus x squared. Now one of these factors of sixteen will reduce with that factor of sixteen, so one of those guys is gone. And that's our answer. Now, if you're saying to yourself, that does not look anything like this, Miss Townsend, you're right. We still have a little bit more algebra to do to make it look like that. Now, one thing I notice is that I've got a negative exponent here. <laughs> and if I want to get rid of that negative exponent, I can if I multiply by exactly the same expression with the same exponent, but positive, because if I take x to some power and add x to it, or multiply by x to a different power, I just add the exponents. So if I want this to be a 16 minus x squared to the zero, I can multiply by 16 minus x squared to the positive one half, because this to the negative one half times this to the positive one half, it's gonna be this times this to the negative one half plus one half, which is zero. Anything to the zero other than zero is one. Um, so multiplying this expression by this will make that a 16 minus x squared to the zero, which will be one and it'll all be gone. But remember this red expression that I'm multiplying by has to distribute to both of these terms. We're subtracting this from this. So we'll have to distribute that here and here. And if we multiply by that in the, den or in the numerator, we also have to multiply by that in the denominator so that we don't change the value of our fraction. Okay. This is all scratch work, just making sure that that's a, a separate line of thought over there. Okay, let's keep going. Now in the denominator, I notice I've got something to the first and times the exact same thing to the one half. We're gonna add those exponents. One plus one half is two halves plus one half, which is uh, three over two. So it's gonna be a 16 minus x squared to the three over two power in that denominator. And that's exciting because that looks like our denominator. Question is, is the numerator gonna simplify to one? We hope so, we'll see, we'll see if it does. Now here, this times this, up oh, the base is the same again. I've got this expression to the one half times exactly the same expression to the one half. Add those exponents, we get 16 minus x squared to the one half plus one half, that's um, 16 minus x squared to the first. That means I don't need um, parentheses or to the, the first power because it's implied. So this times this just becomes a 16 minus x squared. Now this times this is going to become a negative x squared <coughs> times um, this to the negative one half times that to the positive one half. Oh, that times that is gonna give me 16 minus x squared to the zero, which is one. So I would just end up with this um, negative uh, x squared here, but I'm a little concerned. Oh, I see what I did wrong. Um, this derivative was negative and I forgot to include that negative factor here. So that's that should be a negative, which would mean negative times negative makes that positive, which would make that positive. And then we're here. So these guys reduce, and we get this. And I also forgot that extra factor of 16 in the denominator. This times this is that 16 minus x squared to the 3 halves, and there's still a 16 down there. I almost forgot it. It's still there. Uh, that's giving me what I want. 16 divided by 16 is a 1. So, look, the derivative of our antiderivative 
was the original integrand. And that's what we wanted. Um, okay, so that's the method of trigonometric substitution. Let's outline that method again. We start by preparing to substitute, define x, compute dx, simplify the a squared minus x squared in the sign substitution case. Then you substitute. And the whole point of substituting is to be able to simplify and anti-differentiate. So you uh, substitute. Don't forget to just substitute that dx. It needs to be included as well. Just don't, don't just replace that with a d theta. It needs a, a function of theta times d theta. Simplify anti-differentiate. And then after you anti-differentiate, then you need to find this answer in terms of x. To find that answer in terms of x, you use your original substitution to label the sides of a triangle. So you solve, in this case, in this case, we um, solve this x equals 4 sine of theta for sine of theta. That's going to be, give you two out of the three signs of our sides, excuse me, of our right triangle and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third. And then you use this triangle sides to write tangent of theta. Tangent is opposite over hypotenuse, sorry, opposite over adjacent. And we replace this tangent of theta with that opposite over adjacent and simplify. And that's the last step. So I'll say substitute uh, to write the final answer in terms of theta, or sorry, in terms of x. And we're done. And if you want to, to confirm, you can take a derivative. Saw that there was quite a bit involved here, a lot of algebra. But when we do the algebra, we eventually get to that integrand, which tells us that we did something right. Um, we got the right answer. Let me know if you have any questions about that.